What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna bring you some practical tips, tricks, and small little anecdotes that you can use in your flow journey. It's been a little while since I brought you a tutorial style video. We've been having a lot of fun doing some cool stuff. Today, we're back to teaching. Ready? Let's go. Okay, here we are at my desk, and I have six quick tips for you on how to be successful in flow sourced from the flow community. First up, let's talk about solutions, which was suggested by Peter Veenstra. Thanks, Peter. Solutions it is. So, first things first, there is some prerequisites to solutions. Go to the flow blog, look for the post that's titled Solutions in Microsoft Flow. Go scroll to the bottom and check out what the prerequisites are, okay? You have to have an environment version and how you update that is all here, okay? So go do that and when you do that, over on the left-hand side of your screen over here, you should now see a button called Solutions. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and now it's gonna bring me to a screen where I'll see all of my solution packages. So what is a solution? A solution is a set of flows, apps, CDS entities, and Power BI reports. All four of those things can be packaged up into a solution and then sent off to someone else, to a, to a client, to a customer, to a friend, and then they can import that package and use all of those cool things you've built. So what you'll do is you click on solutions and then you can see I have like my sweet flow pack here, right? So I would click into that solution and we can see that there's nothing here at the moment. And so I would click like new flow, right? Because this is going to be a, a, my sweet flow pack. So then all of a sudden, what's it do? Opens up the flow editor for me. And so now here I am to, to build my first sweet flow for my pack. Okay, so now this takes us to step number two. Ready? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a manual trigger to our flow and we're gonna add an input for file okay and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a step we're gonna click on office 365 outlook and we're gonna choose send an email okay now let's go ahead and click on the three dots here and say rename now what I wanna do is I'm gonna rename this step to send me the photo okay because what I want to happen here is I actually want to when I manually trigger this flow and I take a picture I want it to send me the photo okay now I would go ahead and fill out the rest of my steps like uh, the two fields so I'd put my email if I could type why is it that typing is one of the hardest things to do on camera so there we go it pulls me up okay subject is new flow photo okay and the body will be the file content right there and so now when I take a picture with my flow button it's gonna send me the photo okay so now let's say we wanted to also like add that to a library right so we could say uh, create file right and so then we could choose one of our SharePoint sites. Yeah, I'm trying to use the drop down and it's being a pain. I'm going to click out of this box down here and I'll click back here. And now they show up, of course. And so then let's see, which one should I choose? Let's choose biz apps communities. And then let's just choose like a shared docs folder. And then for the name, we'll put like the city and then the timestamp and that will be like the name of the photo so it's something unique every time and then for the file content okay here we go now this takes us to point number three notice how when we click in the file content here nothing shows up in our columns over here well there's this tricky little guy and his name is Seymour and he lives right here in gray, and he lives right here in blue, okay? If you click Seymour under your trigger, he's gonna now 
open up and produce some additional fields for you that you couldn't see because he was hiding him because he's trying to outsmart you okay but what we want is we want the file content to become the file content so that way we can create a file named city-time okay and so now going back to our second point we're gonna rename this and we're gonna say create the photo in SharePoint okay and now we can see ver very clearly that the first step the first action is send me the photo and the second action is create the photo in SharePoint so that if we start to create additional steps you know like if we just want to get interesting and, and create some kind of variable using some of this data right what we can see is that when we start to choose the value okay and and you want to see what items you can pull out of your previous steps now these are very clearly named create the photo in SharePoint manually trigger the flow send me the photo right instead of just saying send email or create file and imagine now if you had five of these create file steps they would just say create file one two three four five right this way now I'm very able to understand how to know which step is which when I'm building the flows okay all right now step number four okay let's talk about zooming in and out so that if you have a very large flow you can see what the whole flow looks like so first thing is let's go find a flow of mine uh, that's really big and see what we can find out about it here uh, let's go look at team flows and flow of the week and this isn't a huge one but it's kinda big you know if I start to expand all my steps here it definitely becomes a lot to manage right so a trick for you okay you can actually hold control and press minus on your keyboard and that will actually allow you to zoom out here so you can get a full map size view of your flow okay and so um, this is a great way to get a bird's eye view now imagine if I had 10 more steps under each of these how hard it would be to constantly be scrolling up and down to see all of this this is a great way to understand uh, what the full picture of your flow looks like now if you want to go back to normal size you just do the opposite you hold control and you press the plus sign and you can see right up there at the top it was as I'm going out you can see the zoom 67 percent 75 percent coming back up to a hundred percent that's just a quick browser tip for you to be able to get a full view of the flow and then come back to full size thanks to Matt Wade for that tip oh let me go back let me go back see more thanks to Melissa Hubbard thank you for that see more is a very common one naming actions was also Matt Wade and then back to Matt Wade for zooming in and out our next tip though let's go ahead and back out of this flow now ownership this is very very important who owns the flow whenever you're developing a solution you never want to be the only owner of that solution or code or whatever it may be that's a dangerous thing to happen so in flow we have built the idea of team flows you saw that this I clicked into team flows to actually find this flow because you can see here that I actually share it with Gabriel and Gabriel is the one who made the suggestion around ownership he said John you should talk about team flows so Gabriel shout out to you now let's see how easy it is to add another person so if I just want to go ahead and add someone else to this let's say my boss Steven Siciliano there he is and it says okay owners will have full access to my connections so this is important make sure that you're only sharing your flows with people that you trust because they now have access to modify this and change my connections okay and so if I hit OK it would add Steven to the list under me and Gabriel I'm just gonna go ahead and click cancel because Steven doesn't need to own this one at the moment now last but certainly not least let's go ahead and say that we have a flow that's having 
a lot of issues, right? We were, we're testing it out and, and it's failing on us or it's not working as we expect, which, which happens once in a while. We have to know how to disable that flow. So you can see here in my list of my flows, there's a difference, right? This flow right here, it's kind of transparent, a little like grayed out, right? Whereas this flow right here is very vibrant. So this is a flow that's turned on and this is a flow that's turned off, okay? And so very quickly, if we want to be able to turn on and off flows, we can go to the ellipsis right here and we can say turn flow on, okay? I'm gonna do that and now we can see that it becomes bright like the others and then if I wanna do the same thing, turn flow off, same thing here. If I wanted to do it to this flow, turn flow off. We can see very quickly that they change and then become translucent. See, and then I'll turn him back on. And now he's back on. Simple as that. All right, guys, back to outside. And just like that, guys, a bunch of tips and tricks to make you successful in building your next flows. So what did we cover today? First, we covered solutions, how you should be building your flows in the Solutions Explorer now. If you don't have access to that, get a P2 license so that you can build solutions. Also, disabling flows. Disabling flows is absolutely necessary. If one bugs out, if we do something wrong, we wanna make sure that we know how to control it. After that, we talked about Seymour. You know that tricky guy hiding all the additional flow fields. Be on the lookout for Seymour. We talked about ownership. How you should never be the only owner of your flow, right? Like in any other development arena, you're never the only owner of your code and uh, and so same thing with flows okay you don't want to be the only owner of your flow what if they fire you what if you quit what if you get hit by a bus stuff happens okay naming you want to make sure and rename all your actions that way it's easier to track it's easier to remove things if you need to and finally we talked about zooming in and out so that you could get a few a full view of what your flows look like when they're fully built kind of like a flow map and that's all from me today, guys. As always, like and subscribe. Much love. See you in the next video.